Robbie, what's on your radar? On Friday, a disturbing sight caught the attention of Twitter. A group of people in khakis and white shirts and bearing tiki torches had appeared at a rally for Glenn Youngkin, the Republican candidate for governor of Virginia. The image called to mind the odious Unite the Right gathering in Charlottesville in 2017, where a group of mostly white young men wearing similar clothes and carrying tiki torches had marched in support of white nationalism, racism, and neo-Nazism. One counter-protester, Heather Heyer, was ran over and killed by a white supremacist attending the rally. Trump's blasé reaction to what happened in Charlottesville is generally considered one of the low moments of his presidency. If the Unite the Right racists had suddenly reconvened in support of Youngkin's candidacy, this would certainly be both legitimate news and a black eye for Youngkin, who is pulled within striking distance of Democratic frontrunner and former governor Terry McAuliffe. Now, the latest polling shows the two candidates neck and neck, even though Virginia has become a solidly blue state, mostly thanks to the growing number of federal employees living in the suburbs of Arlington. The McAuliffe campaign quickly seized on the tiki torches. Jen Goodman, a communications staffer for McAuliffe, said their presence in front of Youngkin's bus was, quote, disgusting and disqualifying. Christina Frundlich, another McAuliffe campaign spokesperson, tweeted the photo and said, this is who Youngkin supporters are. Actually, it's who McAuliffe supporters are. As many skeptics correctly noted, almost immediately, the people in the photo are not Republicans. They are Democrats posing as Republicans. Two of the people have, in fact, been identified as activists with Virginia's Young Democrats. They were participating in a stunt designed to give the false impression that Youngkin supporters are white nationalists. Any sane political organization would want to run away from this scandal as quickly as possible. And so the Mikhailov campaign wisely put out statement after statement, distancing their side from the stunt, saying the Democratic Party of Virginia, along with its coordinated partners and its affiliates, did not have any role today in the events that happened outside of the Youngkin campaign bus. But you know what isn't a sane political organization? The Lincoln Project. Remember them? It was an anti-Trump media and communications group that raised tons of money, ostensibly with the mission of combating Trump's influence within the GOP, but in actuality, just lined the pockets of its founders. The Lincoln Project produced anti-Trump political advertisements that accomplished next to nothing, persuading zero actual voters, beyond serving as an endless source of resistance fuel for MSNBC talking heads, particularly Joy Reid, who put Lincoln Project grifters on her show over and over again. Here's a clip of Reid interviewing the Lincoln Project's John Weaver on June 27, 2020, about their latest ad. It's time to pick up our heads. Remember who we are. This is the United States of America. I get your heart rate going. Um, Adam Serwer wrote in The Atlantic um, that it's hard for Donald Trump to run against another white guy. Uh, it's becoming clear that after 12 years of feasting on white identity politics with a black man and a woman as its preeminent villains, the Republican Party is struggling to run its Obama era culture war playbook against an old moderate white guy. Um, with you guys running ads like that and Biden sort of almost coming across like sort of a cross-partisan president, what could Trump even do about against that? Weaver, by the way, was eventually accused of sexual harassment by 21 different men. He promised several of them jobs in exchange for sexual favors. He resigned from the Lincoln Project last year, along with many of the organization's initial founders due to the scandal. But since there's still money to be raised by invoking the dreaded specter of Donald Trump, the Lincoln Project is still active. Hours after the Tiki Torch photo went viral, the Lincoln Project took credit for the stunt, saying, quote, Today's demonstration was our way of reminding Virginians what happened in Charlottesville four years ago, the Republican Party's embrace of those values, and Glenn Youngkin's failure to condemn it. If he will denounce Trump's assertion that the Charlottesville rioters possessed very fine qualities, we'll withdraw the tiki torches. Until then, we'll be back. Now, Stuart Stevens, a member of the Lincoln Project, defended the stunt in an interview with Chris Cuomo. Let's watch that. Some people showed up at a Yunkin event posing as Charlottesville po protesters. Uh, a group you're with, the Lincoln Project, owned that it was them, that they posed this way because they wanted people to remember. Uh, you're getting crushed by people on the right uh, as a dirty tactic. Do you stand behind what was done, and is that being what you guys say you oppose? Um, no. Listen, every day uh, I hear people pleading with the Lincoln Project to help show Democrats how to win, how to play hardball. Um, you know, this is an example. 
the, the question here is it's not about some guys who showed up at a rally. It's why hasn't Glenn Youngkin denounced Donald Trump for saying that there were good people on both sides? I mean, that is absolutely outrageous. At least the Lincoln Project is being honest here, I suppose, that the best way to win is to deceive, <laughs> because there should be no doubt that the group is embracing the dirtiest, most vile sort of tactics, actions that they claim caused them to leave the Republican Party and turn against Trump. I should note, to be completely clear, it's not actually been demonstrably proven that the Lincoln Project was behind this stunt. They might just be taking credit for it. But whether it was the Lincoln Project hiring Democratic activists or just Democratic activists on their own, it is abundantly clear that no one involved was an actual Republican or an actual white nationalist. Now, many, Ryan, many in the media obviously saying, well, these are never Trump Republicans. This is a, this is an anti-Trump Republican group, but like they're, they're not, they don't engage in any Acti activity right. that is remotely associated with Republican cause that they oppose reflexively now every Republican politician, which is their right, but they're not a Republican group. Right. It'd be like saying that Kirsten Sinema is a Green Party senator. Right. Like she's not. Yeah. Okay. At one point, she was a Green Party, and that's funny. We can joke about that. But she's not in the Green Party right. anymore. She's a Democrat now. Uh, so, okay. Yeah. And so on, online, yeah, I, as soon as this came out, I was like, this, this smells like a, a, a democratic affiliated scam pack. Like that's, that's, this is the kind, and, and there's a deeper story here about the way that these scam packs need these stunts to generate money on mm -hmm. Twitter. They don't need it, but they've become these, these voracious kind of, uh, small dollar hoovers where they trick these resistance liberals into turning over $10 a month. And so they need to constantly up and up and up this, the, the, these stunts that they're doing. What, you know, normally they're much more benign things like uh, uh, flying you know, an airplane over, uh, over like a football stadium that Trump's in and that, that like mocks him or something right. like that, or, or, or putting, you know, the, putting some image up on a building or you know, some stunt like that. This takes it to another level. And so then when it, when it emerged that when Lincoln Project claimed credit for it, people, people, at least the kind of centrist Democrats were always harassing me on Twitter, like, ha ha, you were wrong. You said it was a Dem affiliated scam pack and it's the Lincoln Project. I'm like, wait a minute. That's exactly what they That's are. That's exactly what they are. And, and the idea that like they know how to win, they know really how to beat Trump and, and Democrats should take advice from them is so stupid. What, there's no evidence that they were, that they were helpful, that they were persuasive. Trump's a capture of the Republican vote increased in in the 2020 yeah. election. So what what did this add up to, other than you know telling kind of resistance liberal media figures exactly what they want to hear? Which again, fine if you want to do that, but it's not making right. a difference. Right. They know how to win so well that they were driven out of their own political party. <laughs> They're the biggest losers in politics. Yeah. Like they don't even have a place in their own political party. And they helped create the conditions that led to their own getting kicked out of the right. party. So it's not as if they were just these passive victims of, of historical forces. They helped, they helped create their own uh, failures. And so then they come over and they tell Democrats, you know, we're going to, you know, we're, we're going to show you how to win. What they're actually going to show you how to do is how to feel really good after watching one of their ads and give money to the Lincoln Project. But like you said, zero evidence that they accomplished their goal, their stated goal, which was to reduce Trump's share of the Republican vote. They're like, leave, leave Republicans to us. We know Republicans. Trump gets millions more Republican votes under the Lincoln Project than he got the time before. And now they may have just uh, cost Terry McAuliffe the, the governor's race. So great job, guys. Nice work if you can get it. <laughs> it's coming up. Julia Manchester and Philip Wegman are with us to talk about the Virginia race when Rising returns. <laughs> 